Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a perfume video for you obviously and I have tons of perfume content coming up in the next week or two. I don't even know where to begin. I have so many amazing discoveries that I want to share with you guys but today's video is going to be sort of a mini haul and two of the perfumes in today's video were kindly sent over from Fragrance Buy to me to review for you guys. One of them was purchased with my own money. A couple of them I absolutely love and adore and I'm really excited to share these new sort of newfound loves and discoveries of mine with you guys. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfume. So if that's something that you like, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you have tried any of these perfumes, also let me know down below your thoughts and are there any other perfumes from these houses that you would suggest I check out. And don't forget that everything will be linked down below in the description box. Whenever I can get a discount on perfumes, especially some more expensive perfumes, or whenever I can find like a great cheapy purchase, I like to do that because perfume is extremely expensive. And so all of the perfumes in today's video can be found at a huge discount at Fragrance Buy, and I will have everything linked down below if you guys are interested. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's perfume video. Okay, so the first fragrance, and this is from the House of Latafa, and I don't have a whole lot of experience with the House of Latafa. I've only tried a few. This is called Yara. And I will be honest, I do not like this bottle. This is probably the one of the least pretty looking bottles in my opinion. It's very bulky, it's very, um, I don't know, very big, and it just doesn't look like the type of bottle I would want sitting on my perfume tray personally. But if you don't mind the bottle, the scent that's inside is really, really nice. And this is kind of a nice dupe for something like Ariana Grande Ari or Sweet Like Candy. It's a really delicious kind of gourmand vanilla perfume, and I think this would really appeal to people who like those kind of sweet, Ariana Grande sweet like candy perfumes. If you are, you know, a younger person, you're in your teens or 20s and you're looking for something that's very sweet and very delicious and very enjoyable, or just if you're any age and you like that kind of fragrance, this is definitely one to check out. So I just sprayed a little bit in the cap here just because I am running low on my perfume tester strips. And the notes that you have in Yara are heliotrope, orchid, and tangerine. In the middle, you have gourmand accord, tropical fruits, and in the base, you have vanilla, sandalwood, and and musk and this one you guys smells absolutely delicious it's very very gourmand very sweet very vanilla it just smells really sweet and really delicious and it really reminds me of something like ariana grande's ari sweet like candy also people on fragrantica were comparing it to mont blanc signature and yes i do definitely pick up a mont blanc signature vibe as well but I would actually say I almost think I like this better than Mont Blanc Signature. This is a little bit more kind of, um, it's just very heavy on the vanilla and it definitely has more of a gourmand touch to it. So I really like this one. It's, it's actually really, really nice. I will be honest, I just cannot stand the bottle. Like I really wish that this came in a, like a more elegant looking, typical perfume presentation kind of bottle. I would really like that a lot more. And this isn't really my personal style of perfume. You guys know I've tried Mont Blanc Signature and it wasn't my cup of tea. And I've also obviously tried the Ariana Grande perfumes and Sweet Like Candy and Ari were just not my personal favorite type of fragrance. But if you like those ones, you will definitely like this, you guys. It's quite good. And it also has pretty good longevity. I would say it's about moderate. It's not a beast, but it's not weak either. So that is the first one in today's video. Not my favorite, but I do think that a lot of you guys would really like it. And it is definitely one to check out. And also this is extremely affordable. So All right, guys. So this perfume, I'm so, so excited to share with you. And this is Amouage Sunshine Woman. So you guys, I told you guys in a recent video when I did my best perfumes by house that I really wanted to come back and revisit Sunshine Woman. Back when I was first starting my perfume journey, I was very much a noob when it came to perfumes and especially niche perfumes. I was really used to smelling sort of the Victor and Rolfs of the world and the Olivier Bells of the world and the Black Opiums of the world. And I just hadn't really acquired much of a taste for niche perfumes, especially something like Sunshine Woman. This is a tobacco fragrance and so this one is a little bit more challenging compared to a lot of like mainstream designer perfumes that you see on the market and the very first time that I smelled this I remember not liking it all that much and thinking not that I disliked it but I didn't really like it I was sort of neutral and I remember thinking like why would somebody want to smell like tobacco like it's just I don't know it just wasn't I didn't understand 
the concept behind this perfume, but I remember kind of what it smelled like and I always wanted to go back and revisit and I thought, you know what? My tastes have really evolved and changed over the last couple of years, so why not give this perfume a shot and see how we feel about it these days? And I'm so glad that I did. And you guys, coming back to it this time around, I have a whole different feeling about this perfume. And also what I did in the beginning when I first smelled this perfume was I never actually put it on skin. I put it on paper and I kind of thought to myself, no, that tobacco is not for me. I don't think that perfume's for me. And you guys, this perfume on skin is so much different than it is on paper. So if you have been like me and you have made the mistake of trying perfumes on paper only and then kind of coming up with your final judgment, I would really encourage you to make it a habit to start putting perfumes on your skin, even perfumes that you don't think would be your cup of tea, because honestly, what you get at the perfume counter and what you get when you try a little paper strip, it just is so different compared to how it actually wears and what it smells like on your skin. And once I get this on skin, you guys, this becomes just such a beautiful, delicious, creamy, almondy, slightly tobacco-y but very like fruity apricot-y type of fragrance it's absolutely beautiful and it's super addictive and just perfect for a warm summer day like to me this is absolutely sunshine in a bottle it smells happy and warm and it just makes me feel as though the sun is actually shining down on me and i'm just someplace you know closer to the equator than where I am right now, which is way up north. And it just honestly brings a smile to my face and it's such a beautiful fragrance. So the notes that you have in Sunshine are almond, black currant, and artemisia. In the middle, you have osmanthus, vanilla, magnolia, and jasmine. And in the base, you have white tobacco, papyrus, juniper, and patchouli. And I just wanna give you kind of a closer look of the bottle and how absolutely beautiful it is. This bottle actually has a bit of a shimmer to it. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this bottle actually has a little bit of a shimmer to it, which is quite beautiful. Then they have the Amouage logo on the very front, which I think is really pretty. I've always loved the Amouage bottles so much and I told you guys before that I was really looking forward to having an homage in my collection. And then the cap is this beautiful kind of, I don't know, seashell looking shape almost. And it has the little jewel in the middle and it's just so pretty. And then this is also a magnetized, magnetized cap. This fragrance, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about what it smells like because I'm sure that many of you have already smelled it before. But what I get mostly from this perfume, especially in the opening, I do get quite a lot of that tobacco. I would say that the tobacco for me um, is a little bit more dominant in the opening and it tends to mellow out a little bit as the perfume dries down. It's not like a harsh, dark, like pipe tobacco kind of thing. It's a very clean tobacco. So it's a white tobacco and it smells very clean and kind of airy. It has this beautiful, clean clean, airy vibrance about it. It's just not, it just doesn't smell dirty or anything like that at all. It's very palatable, very smooth and easy to enjoy. You also get a lot of this osmanthus, which gives it kind of this apricot feel, like this warm, like sweet apricot kind of feel to it, very fruity. And then as it dries down, I pick up a lot more of this sort of a creamy vanilla. So it's just a really beautiful, soft, feminine, creamy vanillic almond with this like very clean tobacco kind of running through it. And the longer it dries down on my skin, the longer it sits on my skin, the more I like it, the more beautiful it becomes. And like I said, it truly does just smell kind of like sunshine in a bottle and it's very pretty. And you guys, these perfumes retail for quite expensive, but like I said, you can get them on Fragrance Buy for like a huge discount. So this one is almost like half retail price. Absolutely beautiful. So this was officially my first homage fragrance in my collection and I just really love it and I can't wait until summer so I can actually give this one a little bit more of a wear. I think it's going to be really, really enjoyable. And I also have another homage fragrance which I will be sharing in a future video with you guys. So that is my thoughts on Amouage Sunshine Woman. Like I said, I'm so glad that I decided to give this one a revisit because now I totally understand why people are obsessed with this one. I understand where the hype comes from and I just think it's very gorgeous and I really, really like it. So yeah, very soft, very pretty, very easy to wear, not challenging, a lovely tobacco fragrance. Okay guys, so now we come to a fragrance that I never in a million years ever thought would be in my collection. And this is Initio's 
oud for greatness. So like I said, you guys, this is a perfume that I never imagined in a million years I would ever have in my collection. You guys know if you've been watching me for a while that oud is a note that I have previously struggled with a lot. Oud, if you haven't smelt it, is kind of like a very animalic, well, it can smell a little bit animalic, sometimes it's less animalic, but it's a very specific type of a woody type of note. Um, and once you've smelled it, you never forget it. It's very particular and it's in a lot of fragrances, especially more of like Middle Eastern leaning fragrances. If you, you just have to go and smell an oud dominant fragrance and you'll understand what I mean. Um, but oud is something I just have struggled with so much in the past and I always thought it was very masculine. What happened with this one was I actually had a little um, decant, a tiny little decant of oud for greatness sitting upstairs in my little sample bin. And because my tastes have been changing a little bit and I've kind of been wanting to explore and experience more perfumes, I thought, you know what, why don't I just humor myself? Why don't I put just a little dab of oud for greatness on my skin. What's the worst that can happen? And honestly, you guys, I thought I was going to want to wash it off because I just didn't think I could do oud. And I, when I had previously smelled the sample of this and put it on paper, I just thought, no, there's no way like that is not for me. I couldn't wear that. But you guys, when I put this on my skin and it was just a tiny, tiny little drop of oud for greatness, like, cause there was hardly anything left in the little sample. I kid you not. So at first it was quite strong and I, I was like, okay, yeah, that smells like oud for greatness. Like, and it's strong, it's oud. It wasn't putting me off, but I didn't really enjoy it either. But after this dried down, you guys, the sillage and the wafts I was getting from this fragrance coming up through the air, I actually had to go out that night and go to the post office and I was wearing this on my wrist and I had like a sweater and I had my winter jacket and even with all of that on and this cold air, I was still getting whiffs of this as I was walking and that was from a tiny, tiny little drop and I just knew that I smelled like a million bucks. Like I felt incredible with that scent coming off of me and I can't describe it, but it's like once you get this on, this has a lot of saffron in it as well and it has a little bit of a spiciness to it. So that saffron with this oud, the combination of those two paired with the other notes, it just is something magical. And I totally understand why everybody is obsessed with this perfume. And actually once I got it on skin, it didn't come across nearly as masculine as what I thought it was going to. It is still pretty masculine. Like this is a unisex perfume, could go either way. But once it was on skin, I felt that it was perfectly appropriate for me as a woman and also for me as somebody who prefers feminine perfumes. This just had, it had this, this sillage and this Oh, it just smelled incredible, you guys. So the notes that you have in Oud for Greatness are saffron, nutmeg, and lavender. In the middle, you have Oud, and in the base, you have patchouli and musk. And I think what makes this perfume so incredible is that you have such a high dose of saffron in here. And saffron is a note that can go either way for me. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't like it. It really depends on how it's done. Um, for example, the saffron that's in Blue Heart from Tamine, I can't do that fragrance the saffron and everything else that's in blue heart it just really hits my nose the wrong way in here for some reason there is something about this one that is just unlike any other fragrance and it just smells incredible and honestly you guys it doesn't even smell as good at the bottle once this is on skin it, the way that it wears is so much better and i'll be honest i haven't had a lot of time to wear this one and i do feel like this is going to be a perfume that i have to be in the right mood to wear I don't think this will be a super easy reach. I think I would be more likely to reach for it at night and maybe even in the cooler weather. So this will be really interesting to play with and try more in the summer. It's also very beast mode. You don't need very much of this. Like I said, I just had that tiny little drop of this on my wrist and it was projecting. And you guys, this perfume actually lasted until the next day. I could still smell this perfume on my skin the next day at work, like 15 hours later, a tiny, tiny drop. So it is so beast mode. It's so strong. It's so potent. Even at the bottle, it's still coming across really strong, almost to the point that I'm like, eh, I don't know if that's for me. It's one again that you just have to get on your skin and experience it and wear it. 
And I will say as well, um, the day that I was wearing this perfume, I also was testing a few other little samples that I had. And I had um, a little spray of a very sweet gourmand sugary fragrance on one arm as well. And so I was getting like little wafts of both. And I think that this just added such a nice touch of this sophisticated, dark, spicy oud, this airy, spicy oud. It just added a lovely touch to what would have otherwise been just a very like sweet gourmand fragrance. So I do think that this would make a great layering perfume as well. I think you could layer it with vanilla, any kind of a sugary fragrance, like a gourmand, something like Fire at Will, something like that. But I have to tell you guys, I, I understand the hype. And this is a super sexy perfume. I showed it to my boyfriend. He really likes it. So I have a suspicion that I will probably end up buying a bottle for him just because I want I want him to wear this. Like, I think this would smell so amazing on him. And I know that he would like it. And it is very masculine. Um, but I also think women can definitely get away with it. And yeah, there's just something very powerful about this one and super sexy and just incredible. It's one of the most incredible fragrances I've ever smelled. So really interesting to me because like I said, a couple years ago, I would not have ever considered even trying this one. And now I have a bottle of it. So it just goes to show how much your taste can change over time. And this is definitely without a doubt, one of the most beautiful oud fragrances. And it also comes across very clean. It doesn't come across like dirty and animalic to me at all. It really doesn't. I think because that saffron in there is so potent um, and the saffron almost overtakes it. So it is an oud fragrance, but it's not just a nude fragrance. Um, yeah. So I don't know. You guys have probably smelt this. Tell me what you think. I know it's very different from how I would normally, what perfumes I would normally wear. But like I said, I think I will have to be in the right frame of mind to wear this one. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be like a daily signature scent kind of thing. It definitely makes me feel some sort of way when I wear this one. So that is the third one and the last one in today's video. And that is Oud for Greatness from Initio. So that was it for today's little mini perfume haul. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances and I'll see you guys all very soon in my next one. Bye for now.